Good day, friends. Welcome back to another devlog for Wizard Chess. My name is Ben, as usual, and uh, let's just get straight into it, shall we? So, we are up to devlog 16. Uh, it's January 2023, as I'm sure you know, unless you're still <laughs> barely coming out of the holiday coma. Uh, this is 0.5.7, so the astute among you will know the last video I did was on 0.5.5. There was a 0.5.6, but that's rolled into this one because we made some, uh, well, a bunch of changes. That's what I'm not going to spoil it. We'll talk about this in a second. So before that, I just wanted to say there's um, a new video, new video, <laughs> that, that was a, a little nice mix up there, a new video out from Vinny Vine Source covering the game. Um, this one's probably one of the most popular videos on the game so far. And it's really cool to see people having fun with it. So yeah, check this out if you want to see someone else's perspective other than mine playing the game. Um, I'll link to it in the description. Um, I'm still getting used to this YouTube business. Okay, other news. Um, the game is still creeping up there in terms of positive reviews on Steam. If you own the game on Steam and you have uh, check out this new update and you like it, please consider leaving a positive review. This really helps. It is basically the way that all organic discovery happens on Steam is from positive reviews. So... Yeah, if you have positive things to say, please uh, say them. So, with that out of the way, what are we going to cover today? Uh, we are going to cover... It's not actually... like it doesn't look like that much stuff, but I have a lot to say about all these items because they're kind of interwoven with one another. So, new unit lineup. We teased this in the December devlog that there would be a new lineup for the units. This is working now. Rank system. This is new. You can see here this bard is rank G inside this little meter. Unlock system. We've reworked how unlocks work in the game quite a lot. Uh, there's a little preview there. Move visualization. This is a small one, but one I wanted to mention because I think I made it better. And a difficulty and balance with the, the dead bard here <laughs> for accompaniment. Uh, this is probably going to take me a while to explain this point. We'll, we'll get through it all. This is all, like I said, kind of linked together. So, first, new unit lineup. As you can see, down the bottom of the screen, if I get my hand off the video thing here, down the bottom of the screen, there are these four unit cards. You'll see me go into combat here, and actually three of those cards, but not the fourth, got deployed because I only deployed three units. So part of this new UI is to help communicate a lot of things that already worked this way in the game, but it's just a bit clearer because there's a visual representation of it. So that showing the, your cards being dealt out is supposed to help you understand that your cards are played from left to right in that lineup. And if I skip a little bit ahead in this video, so we'll get out of this fight, shall we? Oh, I spent a long time in here. Yes, yeah, so you get out of the fight, and then we get back to the map, and then I'm just going to pause for a second. So the order of these cards, can I make this thing disappear? This is very annoying. Yeah, the order of these cards down the bottom from left to right is ordered by fatigue, which is a concept that we introduced recently, and it is tutorialized as of this new patch, which it wasn't before. So that's, it should be easier to understand this. Um, Fatigue is basically every time a unit is deployed in combat, it gains fatigue, and this list of units is sorted from least to most fatigued. So you'll always deploy your least fatigued units first. And you might be wondering, okay, so like, how do I manage my fatigue then? For the most part, you will just not notice it because it will cycle your units for you here, but you can intentionally manipulate the system by... I clicked onto the next thing. Go back. Go back. Uh, by... Giving your units upgrades is what I was going to say. So here we go. But if you get, assign an upgrade to a unit, it resets their fatigue and the list as a result reorders immediately in front of you. This is way clearer than how we had it with the previous unit display where we had the like older, like, fatter cards that were more horizontal instead of this vertical card format. I'm making hand gestures you can't see. Anyway, um, this new layout here, it's animated and it's a lot more space conserving, which is... Both things that help a lot in terms of readability, but the main thing is the movement. So, like, when a unit is uh, has its fatigue changed, you get a new unit or whatever, the, though you can see immediately how the party reflowed to fit that unit into the lineup. You should see it again here if I give someone a skill upgrade. Oh, well, that one was already at fatigue zero, so that didn't do anything. Um, there you go. So, yeah, I really like this. I think it actually makes the game feel, like, a lot cooler. It was a pain in the ass to build this UI component. <laughs> That's just a little bit from behind the scenes from me. But I'm really proud of it. it it's cool. Like, it just makes it feel more gamey. And I think that this is a game that wants to feel gamey. Okay, so, enough about the cards. The rank system. This is the new stuff. So, this is the uh, new victory screen you're seeing here. So, it counts up how many heroes. It says three. Um, I see four. 
this seems like a problem. Perhaps this is saying 11 and there are 12 here as well. We'll have to look at that after the video. But yeah, this reviews the like the way your run went basically. So how long it took you, how many heroes you brought with you at the end, how many enemies you defeated. And it also, if you see at the start here it comes in, you'll see this uh, white bit of this bar. This is how much experience the bard gained from this battle. And bosses also gain experience. My boss is maxed out at level G here for the time being. So you might be wondering why would G be the top? That doesn't make any sense. It's not the top. The ranks go from J up to A uh, currently. And then there might be some beyond that based on how we choose to approach things. So you can see here, on, um, this is showing on the title screen. I did it again, I went to the next thing. Um, on the title screen, yeah, you can see the rank next to their name in the opponent lineup here. So that's just, like, this is present sort of throughout the game now. Um, basically, this is totally involved with the unlock system we're about to explain here, but you might remember that the end of the run used to have a shop at it where you could spend your excess vim. Uh, that's gone now. So what's that, what that's replaced with is your vim contributes towards the experience you earn as the bard. Uh, both the bard and the opponent will level up well, gain experience and level up after encounters, well, after a run, not after encounters. I should be specific. Only on victory does this happen. If you lose, no one gains any experience. It's only when you um, succeed. And the boss will level up, you will level up. If you level up, you unlock starting parties. So gone are the saving up Vim to unlock starting parties at the end of the run dynamic. Now, if you level up your bard, you just get starting parties. Uh, leveling up opponents does, well, it kind of does what you expect. They get stronger. Like, it's it's the very intuitive way of working. We landed on this... I'm going to explain this a lot. We landed on this because we've watched a lot of people playing the game on the Let's Play coverage and talking to current players, and the thing we've been really worried about from a developer perspective is the re-engagement loop of playing again and there being a reason to play again, that it's fun to play again. So leveling up the boss and the boss getting harder in correspondence with the bard also leveling up and unlocking things is a really good motivational structure to fit into because you always have something to do like, oh, one more game and I'll level the bard up, one more game and I'll level up Cormag or whatever. And this is also how new opponents will be unlocked by being uh, an existing opponent of a certain rank. So you have to rank them up, then beat them at a certain rank to get to the next one. And as I will explain later in this, this rank sort of flows through the whole run and determines how difficult the overall game is, not just the boss fight. Uh, okay, so, new unlock system, which dovetails with that. So you can see here, uh, I kind of came into it real fast, but let's start off here. We're in a shop, uh, we're in a shop, and you can see it's a traits and stats shop, so stat upgrades, traits here, and this one looks different. It's, it's got sparkles on it, and it has unlock down here, so veteran uh, is a trait that's not unlocked by default. And I can spend 8 Vim here to unlock it, and then, as it says here, trade is unlocked. Veteran, 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 veteran. Double title is nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, this upgrade can now appear in reward rooms and shops. So, you spend double the Vim to unlock it here, but now it's permanently unlocked from this point onwards. So, oh, I clicked out of it. So, this basically, like, Instead of you waiting to the end of the run and being like, oh, I have this leftover money, I guess I'll throw it into a trait. Here you see the trait and you can decide, I want it right now, but it costs heaps. But you unlock it forever. So if you're flush with money, this is a really nice, like, at the moment you can use the money, you can choose to put it into an unlock. Now, you don't always get an unlock in every shop. They are random, and so you can't guarantee that you'll unlock anything in particular on any given run. I think that kind of adds to the mystery of it, to be honest. And we may ha add other ways of unlocking outside of shops, like in treasure rooms or special challenges or whatever in the future. Uh, I'll talk about this like at the end of the video, I think a bit more, because um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it on too much. But this is a much cleaner motivational structure for why you'd want to unlock something at a given point in time. Similar with the units, sometimes you'll go into a shop and you'll see there's a new unit here, a monk for 12 vim. And now this monk is unlocked permanently. So this is a similar thing. You can be like, I want this unit, it looks cool, and I want it forever, and you just get it. Uh, and here I'm showing off the fact that the monk can actually swap with everyone in the shop and break a whole bunch of stuff, which is... I don't know why I chose to video this, but I was, I was like, oh, you can do this. This is cool. Let's just move everyone around. Um, so yeah, that's possible. You can, like... 
You could put the shopkeeper in the jail cell, which is the one thing I didn't do that I should have done. It's definitely the funniest thing to do. Anyway, um, so yeah, traits and units are unlocked this way by buying them in shops for extra money, but parties are not unlocked by buying them anymore. Parties are only unlocked by ranking up your bard. So there's sort of this difference in structure to that where the way I want to indicate it to people is that you earn the uh, units and the trait unlocks by playing intentionally to get them. The starting parties are just, you play a lot, you get more starting parties because, I mean, you're going to get bored quicker, so we want to give you more things to try. Okay, move visualization. Just a short one, but I reworked the move visualization a little bit. You can see here on hover versus click. It used to be that there were different colors on hover versus on click. I'm actually not sure why I ever did this. Um, now they're different colors for the two teams. So your team shows uh, green and pink for movement versus targeted, and the enemy shows yellow versus blue for movement versus targeted. Uh, they don't have any targeted abilities on their team right now, so you can't see that. I also changed the way the actual things appear on the grid squares, and I made it so that they're a bit more visible in general. A lot of these changes, like, at the start, you're like, I don't want to cover up the environment with all this UI. And then you're like, but the UI is the part that lets you play the game. So it's pretty important to actually have it be as visible as possible. And I saw a few people get a bit confused by this in videos, so we've just been making it a little nicer. Okay, it's an easy one. So this is like the big point, difficulty and balance. But I want to show you something that was at the start of this quickly. You see here hovering over in a combat encounter, it says five. Vim, two Vim, five Vim. So this is the size of the encounter. Uh, it's how much Vim you'll get if you beat it, but it's also how many units you can bring into it is the number that it says there, I believe. Um, this is like, it's not like anyone was telling me that this was a problem in particular, but I just feel like it's a little bit confusing to not have a numerical indication of, you know, how much money or like how many units you can bring into a fight. The visual, sorry, visual size of it was always supposed to be the indication of the difficulty of the encounter, and I think that's intuitive, but this makes it a bit more clear overall. Um, so I wanted to sort of segue into that with, we rebalanced a bunch of stuff, and that's to do with like level generation, like where you spawn when you start a combat encounter, um, how many units come in, how many enemies come in, how much Vim you get from encounters, all of that, along with the, the further you are, into, well, I mentioned the difficulty system, I think, in a recent, um, devlogs as in the start of it which is that it gets harder over the course of a run champion enemies will be introduced to certain difficulty levels etc uh that system is now augmented with the rank of the opponent you're playing so if you've ranked up cormag by playing them many times everything will be harder the ai will be smarter they'll spawn harder enemies with higher skill levels you'll have more enemies in encounters potentially um, the boss itself gets stronger like it actually gets a stat upgrade at the extreme versions of this so the boss is stronger and basically, we've ended up in a place where you can now... Well, maybe I'll explain the problem before I explain the solution, huh? Uh, the problem we've had historically is that the game has either felt too hard or too easy. Like, it's just been flip-flopping either side of that point where new players get kind of overwhelmed by how much there is to know in the game, which is fair enough. There's a lot to know in the game, and, like, it is confusing. But experienced players who kind of click with it, sometimes it can be really easy for them at the start to just, like, breeze on through. And so we want it to be that, like, they can have a challenge suited to their skill level if they're finding it really easy. But we don't want to skip the easy part, because earlier on in the game's development, we were like, yeah, it'll just be hard. Hard game, good game, whatever. But I have come around on that to think, like, I mean, even if you're, like, a smart player who wants a challenge, there's just too much to get across the moment you come into it the first time. So we've got this progressive difficulty system where it gets harder across the run, it gets harder the more you play the same opponent, and then ultimately you'll unlock more opponents that are harder as a baseline as well. So yeah, we're getting this really gradual difficulty system now, which I like a lot. I'm actually really happy with the design of this whole thing. Like the challenge feels about right as I go through a run. I am just watching this run play out in the background here, by the way. Um, spoilers. I don't know if we'll get to the end of this video, but I did lose this run against the boss, which is kind of the point I'm trying to make here, that, like, you actually, like, I'm, well, I'm supposed to be <laughs> good at the game, and I'm losing occasionally, which is good for a roguelike, I think. 
I don't want this to be a game where you just win every time you play it, even if you're really good. It should be very likely that you'll win, but, you know, there is RNG involved, and I, like, I'm sure I made some mistakes in the course of this run that I could have played better, whatever. Um, I'm kind of coming at the end of this bit, but there's lots more videos, so let's just go to the part of the boss where I end up losing. You'll see here, I actually got to... Yeah, here, yeah, look at this. So I have a unit here attacking this shield orb. He has six attack, he has seven defense. I can use the Bard's Inspiration to break this shield orb and make Cormag vulnerable, but Cormag is a rank G here and has an increase to their attack and their defense, and so I can't kill them. Uh, I have six attack on this unit plus a one buff from the Bard, and so I just say, screw it, kill me here, because I can't actually overcome... Um, Cool, Mag. This isn't a great like place to end up where you don't have enough damage. Uh, I'm still thinking about the best way to deal with situations like this. I think it's okay, but it's not great. So there you go. We lost. Uh, he defeated us. We can try again. Um, cool. So that's that's basically the overview of the changes themselves. And like most of it really has been just trying to make the... Oh, what's my next slide for this? Yeah, here we go. Um, so this is the full change log for this build. Not that much in here. Um, we've been really focused from a design point of view on, like I said, how players have been interacting with the game, watching all the Let's Plays, hearing the feedback comments, and just trying to make it as fun as possible from the moment you start playing, get you in that loop of feeling like you're increasing in skill and then there's more challenge there, unlocking content steadily and having that feel natural and organic, wanting to go back into a run after finishing one with an obvious like continuation there. All of that's been like really front of mind. And we... We're really keen to try and get the desert update out right now, like for the uh, devlog that I'm currently doing here, but it just turned out that I, well, I, we, we all thought, um, Ricky Graham and I, after talking about it a lot, it just made more sense to try and make the game as fun as possible, because, like, isn't that actually the goal? Uh, and obviously we could spend forever making the game as fun as possible. This game has been in development a long time already. So there is an incentive from our part to try and get things moving and get towards the finish line. But there's no point doing that if it's not good. Uh, this is like the thing, I'm bro a broken record about this. Like The whole point of game design is to make something that is fun. If you're not doing that, I don't really know what you're doing, right? And fun is not, like, it's not one thing to every single person out there, obviously. But like, if no one was saying the game was fun, I'd be, I'd be worried. And if more people say it's fun, that's better. Well, more people who I like. <laughs> circular argument here I have to approve of you apparently for you to play my game uh, that's not actually the case but that's how I'm going to make it sound um, and so anyway this is the, the, the change log you can read the full thing on Steam as usual like I said not a lot in here I've covered most of it um, this is where we're going next classic slide the three branching thing which I don't know why I always have to have three branches that doesn't really make that much sense I've just talked a lot about difficulty and progression though so we've been sort of charging down this path being like, you know, we need to address this. We need the scaling of the game, not just across one run, but across your whole time with the game, because we want this to be something you can play a lot, okay? Like, not just something you play, like, three or four times and put down. That's fair enough if that's the case right now. But when the game is finished, as it, in the 1.0 release, we need an answer for how you play for dozens of hours, ideally. Uh, beyond that, the next thing up for, I think, Ricky and I to focus on is more units and traits, maybe some more enemies, just rounding out the fullness of the mountain biome and then also finishing off the desert biome. So what's left for the desert biome? I, I mean, that's not that interesting, honestly. There's a few little loose ends we have to fix just in terms of, a type of, a type of challenge room there called a maze, you might remember if you followed the game for a long time. Need to fix some of the spawning logic and generation logic around mazes. And the boss needs some tuning, balancing, and has to be wired in with the new progression system to make sure that's all working properly. But it's close. And so I think we will have it in your hands reasonably soon. I expect that we will release some units and traits before that happens. And then on to the last biome, the last boss. And here, faintly in the distance, New Game Plus. Um, you know what? I won't talk about this at all in this video because we're already at 20 minutes. Let's just leave that as a mystery. Uh, cool. So, as always, you can subscribe to this channel for more news about the game, more devlogs, obviously. So we're trying to aim for... I don't, I don't think I'll do a devlog for every single release we do on Steam, is what I'm, I'm thinking at the moment. We've been thinking about this, like, roughly two-week cadence of a small patch, and then every, so like every two 
let me try and get this right. There's an A and a B, right? They're about two weeks apart uh, each time. So you go A, two weeks, B, two weeks, A. For the A, that'll be a small bug fix or little content patch, like basically an evolution of the game in a deliberate, like based on the feedback we've been getting, an, uh, an update. And then the B scheme will be something like adding the desert biome, like a bigger, more themed update. We're just trying to find a good cadence for updates that fits right now. That's making sense based on what we've got coming down the line. So yeah, expect still a devlog a month on this channel, but maybe there'll be an update every two weeks or so on Steam and Itch and all that. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to experience those updates, uh, check it out on Steam now. This, this build is already live, so you can play it uh, today and check out all these changes. You can also join our Discord, uh, which is growing steadily. And um, I mean, it's, it's really, we're not talking like all the time in there, but if anyone joins, I will greet you. That's my, my solemn promise. And yeah, if you have any questions about the game or any uh, questions about where we're going with it, then please do ask them. Um, I'm always happy to chat with you about the game. It is, as you can probably tell, something I think a lot about. Uh, and then apart from that, you can follow us on Twitter at wizardchess with an underscore or at VivaVault is me at 2PM Studios is the studio. And you can join the mailing list. Uh, I think that's everything. This was a fast paced video, I'm realizing, but the energy is up. It's good. That's what makes a good devlog usually. So yeah, please go check out the current patch now. Um, really happy with how things are shaping up. I, I feel like I said that every video now, but like we really do seem to be zoning in on what the game wants to be. And it's just getting better, like with every single release. So yeah, let's hope that that momentum keeps up or accelerates. And can't wait for you guys to check out all the stuff that we're about to release in the next patch. But um, I mean, it just keeps going. Anyway, that's enough from me. Have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.